dragon riding is one of the most highly anticipated features of Dragonflight because it grants players almost immediate access to flying in the new zones. On top of this, dragon riding can be even stronger than regular flying mounts if you can learn to master the new system. This video will cover everything from how to access dragon riding, to acquiring your first dragon, all of the dragon riding abilities, dragon races, and more. Let's get started. Dragon Riding is a new feature exclusive to Dragonflight and is only accessible within the Dragon Isles, which is the new continent coming with the expansion. Dragon Riding is essentially a new method of travel across the Dragon Isles, but it differs from regular mount travel because it has dynamic movement systems integrated into it that require you to play with momentum and gravity. When the expansion launches, and for the foreseeable future, Regular flying mounts will remain grounded in the Dragon Isles, meaning that dragon riding is your only way of flying around the new zones. Let's look at how you can get started with your dragon riding and acquire your first dragon. You will be given your first dragon riding mount within approximately one hour of questing in the Waking Shores, the first leveling zone of Dragonflight. You don't have to do anything special for this, just follow the main story campaign and it will lead you directly to getting your first dragon, the renewed Proto-Drake. As you progress further through the Dragonflight campaign, you will unlock additional dragon riding mounts. The Windborn Velocidrake from the Onaran Plains, the Highland Drake from the Azure Span, and finally the Cliffside Wilder Drake from Thaldrassus. Each dragon has a special mount-up animation as well. The dragon will fly to your side and your character will jump on. You will also be able to fully customise each of your dragons, which we will look into a bit later on in the video. So you have your first dragon and it's time to take to the skies. Dragon riding mounts will be in your mount journal and you can keybind them as normal to summon and dismiss them. Once mounted, you'll have your action bars replaced with dragon riding abilities which at first will be your basic abilities. Skyward Ascent, which propels you upwards to start flying, which can also be done by double jumping while on your dragon. The other ability you will have is Surge Forward, which does exactly as it says, surging your dragon forward and increasing your momentum. The other thing you will see is a resource bar containing three orbs. These are your Vigor charges. Vigor is essentially an energy resource for your dragon, which you spend in order to use dragon riding abilities. Vigor recharges over time as long as you are on the ground. Initially, it will take 30 seconds for one Vigor charge to reset. You can still ride your dragon as a ground mount while recharging Vigor if you'd like to, but Vigor will also continue recharging while you are dismounted. The last component of dragon riding are the movement mechanics. Your dragon is aerodynamic, meaning that flying downwards will increase your speed over time as you gain momentum. The opposite effect will occur if you fly upwards for too long, as gravity will be working against you. If you fly upwards for too long, your dragon will run out of momentum and flap slowly to the ground. Flying directly forward will keep you moving at a fairly steady momentum, but you can use your dragon riding abilities at any point while flying to fly faster or higher. Now let's take a look at each dragon riding ability in a bit more detail. As mentioned earlier, you will be able to use Skyward Ascent and Surge Forward as soon as you acquire your first dragon. These are your baseline dragon riding abilities. Skyward Ascent to either lift off from the ground and begin flying, or to use while already in flight to propel you upwards and of course surge forward to launch yourself forward at high speed and maintain momentum. Next, Thrill of the Skies is a passive ability that allows you to recharge Vigor every 15 seconds instead of 30 whenever you are flying at high speed. It isn't stated explicitly how fast you need to be flying for this to occur, but as long as you have a good amount of momentum from diving downwards, you should be fine. The next ability is also passive, and it's called Winds of the Isles. This allows you to detect and use gale winds in the sky. Flying into one will propel you in that direction and give you a small boost of momentum. Once you've unlocked this ability, you will be able to detect nearby gale winds on your minimap 
with this new tornado-looking icon. Next up, Whirling Surge is an active ability which causes your dragon to spiral. This will propel you forward at high speed and give you a good boost of momentum. However, it costs 3 vigor charges, so use it wisely, especially early on when you have very limited vigor to spend. Bronze Time Lock is a 1 second cast that requires you to be grounded on your dragon in order to cast. Using Bronze Time Lock will mark a waypoint before you start flying, which you can then return to by reactivating the ability. This works the same as Mage's Alter Time, Warlock's Demonic Circle, and so on, and in testing, it appears to have unlimited range, but your time lock only remains for a few minutes before it disappears. If you return to the ground before you've used your bronze return, your time lock will remain where you set it, and you can return to it even from the ground. In addition to your baseline abilities, you will also be able to spend talent points in your dragon riding talent tree to increase your dragon's effectiveness. You can access your dragon riding talent tree by clicking on the large icon on your minimap, located in a similar place to your covenant symbol in Shadowlands. The tree is pretty simple, and you will eventually be able to unlock every talent choice available. In order to unlock these talents, you need to collect dragon glyphs, which are large golden symbols floating in the sky that you can collect while dragon riding. I have a video covering every dragon glyph location and how to reach them, which I will leave a link to in the description below. Simply fly into a dragon glyph to pick it up, and that's it. You can see how many glyphs you have available to spend in your dragon riding talent interface. Just be wary that some talent slots require more than one glyph to unlock. Dragon riding is also bringing with it a new minigame feature in the form of dragon racing. Dragon Racing offers multiplayer obstacle courses at varying difficulties for you to test your dragon riding ability. If you played during the Mists of Pandaria, these races are similar to the Cloud Serpent riding courses in the Jade Forest. There are race courses available in each Dragon Isle zone, and they can be found on your map with the new race flag icon. These races are not always available in every zone, so check your map to see where the races are currently being held and how long is left until they finish. You should see a bronze timekeeper wherever there is a race available. This bronze timekeeper will put you into a dragon race as soon as enough players have signed up to compete. In testing, dragon races required a minimum of three players to participate. The races themselves consist of a set of rings for you to fly through that show you the route you need to take, as well as offering a small momentum boost each time you fly through one of the rings. At higher difficulties, you will encounter obstacles such as orbs that will slow you down, or boosts to refresh your vigour. You can earn bronze, silver, and gold ratings in each race course depending on how quickly you complete a race, and there are achievements tied to these races too. In addition to the four unique dragon riding mounts you will unlock in the Dragon Isles, you will also have a whole host of different ways in which to customise them. You can do this by visiting one of the Rostrums of Transformation found scattered across the Dragon Isles. Interacting with a Rostrum of Transformation will put each of your dragons you've unlocked into a barbershop interface where you'll be able to change their appearance. You can change their colour, snouts, armour, tails, and even tiny details like their eyes, jaws, and throats to really make your dragon your own. However, the vast majority of these customization options will be locked, and will require you to gather customization scrolls out in the Dragon Isles. Many scrolls come from world drops and quests, some may come from rares, instance drops, PvP, dragon races, achievements, and more. By the time you have finished the Dragon Isles leveling campaign, you will likely have a good amount of customization options unlocked and available to use. That is everything you can expect from dragon riding. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment and I will do my best to help you. Happy dragon riding and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!